right, in this section, we're going to just briefly go over um, how to use uh, the handwriting uh, recognition application. So if you're using this in an application that's pen enabled, it may be a comment section where you can write a brief note. So I've opened up WordPad as an example so I can apply uh, text input. Now keep in mind you can use the, um, the tablet input panel and handwriting recognition in Microsoft Office applications such as Word, email, uh, PowerPoint and so forth. So um, I have a blinking cursor ready to accept text. So at this point I would use a keyboard and enter text. But what I'm going to do is use the tablet input panel. There's two ways to access the input panel. This is the floating tip. When your pen comes close to the screen, um, it knows a pen is present and it will appear. It doesn't tap the screen. You can also invoke it from the side. So it will appear, now it appears as a floating tip as well. If you want to close it, tap on the X and it will go back and be positioned or docked on the left hand side of the screen. So let's bring up the floating tip. So the floating tip, you have two input modes. You have uh, your keyboard, and if you want to expand it, you can just drag from the right hand corner by the function button and expand it a little bit. So from here, it acts just like a regular keyboard. So I'm going to tap on caps, H, I'm going to take caps off. Shift would have worked just as well. And this is, this is your enter button here. So it opens up a new line. If you need your function keys enabled, tap on function and now your function keys are enabled. You have shift, delete, backspace, and so forth. Control, alt, everything's just a standard keyboard. So, but the exciting part is getting into the actual handwriting mode. So, in Win 7, you, Windows 7, you have the ability to have this device learn your handwriting. So we, we showed you earlier how to enable that feature, so now it's automatically learning, but you can help it along a little better by creating uh, your own handwriting profile. So from, from the tools menu, I expand it and it says uh, personalized handwriting recognition. Let's select that. And from here, um, it'll bring you into um, the main interface where you can um, teach the recognizer to accept your handwriting style. So what it's going to do, I'm going to close out of this in a second, but what it will ask you to do is actually just write a series of sentences as you're building up a profile. So it's learning how you write your C's, A's, M, N's, O, and P's, and so forth. All right, so let's get back into the, the writing pad. So the writing pad, it's going to take any group of shapes and try and convert it to a word. So it's kind of important to write clearly. You'll be surprised what it will pick up. So I'm resting my hand right on the screen, and I'm just going to write P. A and let's see how that comes out. Okay, and some punctuation at the end. And tap insert and wherever your cursor is blinking, that's where the text will appear. So if you don't have a blinking cursor and you write, it's not going to be inputted into that into your your uh, writing areas. Make sure your cursor is blinking. Now, if you do write and no one writes clearly all the time. So if I write Paul is training, it obviously tried to turn that into a word. Now, it's not worth trying to correct it, so I can take my pen and just cross, cross out, put one line through, and it, it erases it. So let's try Paul again. So I tried to write Paul, and of course it picked up that scribble as Paul. So if I write Paul is training. If I want to correct bring and, and convert that to training, to correct it I'm going to tap on the word and you'll see a series of um, alternative words. It's always uppercase if you write in lowercase. If you wrote in uppercase, it'll always try and turn it into uppercase. So that's the option it gives you. So training, I'm just going to write right over the misidentified letters, TR, and you can see it's trying to do a word completion and it found training. So insert and then you can see how you can easily make a correction. Now if I want to remove that line, I made a mistake, I want to remove it, there's two ways of doing it. I can just tap on backspace or I can tap on delete and it will eliminate the words and characters. Or remember your pen is a mouse 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this text by dragging my pen across the screen, right click, and it'll come up, it should come up with my standard editing menu, and I'm going to do, just do a cut. So the way I did that was I did a drag, right click, and cut. Now, especially in point of care environments or even point of service environments, you have a lot of acronyms and abbreviations. And the tablet input panel, although it will, um, you can add acronyms to the dictionary. And in healthcare, you might have, you know, something like this written. And it's never, it's never going to find that or pick it up. So what I suggest you do under Tools, Options, select Writing Character by Character. Then you can always jump back to uh, the freehand style. So if I select the character by character option, you can see now what it does. Instead of trying to recognize each word, what it's going to do is recognize one character at a time. So for example, if I have to write the abbreviation H B dash three four percentage, it'll recognize one character at a time very easily. So I can insert that, and then if I want to freehand write again, under Tools, select Freehand Style, and I have my writing pad back. You can also add words to the dictionary or acronyms. So if I have an acronym that's Z-O-B-D, it's not going to pick that up, so if I tap on it, I can change it, and then from here, I can um, add it to the dictionary. So once I go in and edit it, the Add to Dictionary option will appear, and I can add that acronym to the dictionary. So that's the basis of handwriting recognition. Again, short brief notes, replying to emails, two, three, four lines. It's great if you're adding uh, information into an application or responding to an email and so forth. If you need to do, you know, write a report or create a document, you probably want to use a keyboard and mouse. All right, so that's, that's the basics of the tablet input panel.